As we continue to watch Apple uh, ticking higher a day after becoming the first publicly traded U.S. company to reach that trillion dollar valuation. In a memo to employees, Tim Cook called the news a significant milestone, adding, while we have much to be proud of in this achievement, it's not the most important measure of our success. Financial returns are simply the result of Apple's innovation, putting our products and customers first and always staying true to our values. Josh, uh, as we were waiting for that tick yesterday, we talked about uh, the degree to which this was a topic of discussion in the company. This is a bit of a clue on that. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think Cook there, Carl, is, is making it clear and kind of reiterating what he's talked about with different reporters as they approach this $1 trillion mark, that it's important, it's an exciting milestone, but as he said, you know, these results simply reflect the innovation, the products. In that letter, you know, he also talked about Steve Jobs. He said, listen, you know, cautioned his team there in Cupertino, let's do what Steve would do, which is not to look uh, in the past, but now look forward. And that's what traders, investors, and business people are, are now doing, too. You know, what's next for Apple? What gets... Uh, investors excited uh, in the future. In the near term, of course, all eyes are going to turn um, to that September event. The expectation is Cook is going to take the stage, introduce this trio of new phones. Um, you know, if history is any guide, you would expect to see devices, the faster processors, uh, bigger screens, more advanced cameras. Um, and, you know, I was talking to Ben Beharin yesterday of Creative Strategies, and, and Beharin is a smart, longtime Apple watcher. And as he reminds us, of course, there's that direct relationship to services. You know, what they introduced in September September, those strong features are going to what uh, is going to make services that much more compelling and engaging. And new services could be on the way too. Remember, there's talk of maybe a new video streaming service that could come. Beharin thinks maybe as soon as 2019, a way for Cook and Company to monetize all this original content they're now building up with Hollywood heavy hitters like Oprah uh, and Steve, Steven Spielberg. A lot of interesting stuff to come, Carl. Sean, you were an early investor in Siri, which was sold to Apple uh, a number of years ago now. Looking at where this company's come, Apple specifically, this trillion dollar mark, how it's been able to leverage that technology. Do you wish you had hung on to it longer? Uh, it's a beautiful thing, what's happened with Siri inside <laughs> of Apple. I mean, it's in hundreds of millions of people's of hand, hands uh, every day. And, you know, it's just a momentous occasion. It's, it's actually a bit emotional for me, you know, uh, Apple's been around for 42 years, I'm a couple years older, Apple IIe was my first computer. So to see the way they changed uh, society and the ecosystems that have spun up around the company uh, and how, you know, this, this amazing founding story of, of Steve and, and Steve and building the first computer and then founder redemption as he, you know, left and came back and the company continuing doubling the market cap after his death, I mean, it's just, uh, it's kind of like, what you dream of happening inside of companies, and so it's a, it's a pretty special day for me. You mentioned the ecosystem, uh, and in this memo from Cook, he says, let's take this moment to thank our customers, our suppliers, and business partners, the Apple developer community, our coworkers, and all of those that came before us at this remarkable company. The success of Apple, what does it mean for that ecosystem, all of the apps and the developers and different outside services that have their wagons hitched to Apple? It's, it, it, it's, it's truly amazing. I mean, you think of, of what Apple brought. I mean, you know, the company's done so much, so it's hard to recap in a short segment, but let's just talk about the iPhone. It's in a billion, I think about 1.4 billion of these things have been sold. Uh, the App Store, which seems so natural right now, did not exist before Apple. In fact, you know, Menlo Ventures had a company that tried to do that before uh, the smartphone and it, it just didn't work. Apple perfected it. And so you see companies, you know, like Uber or uh, Snapchat or Facebook, I mean, their entire businesses now revolve around this mobile computer in your pocket. Uh, they just simply were not possible before that. So it's really, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously Apple have done great for themselves, but you know, the peripheral ripple effects throughout the entire world economy are truly felt from this company. Yeah, a fascinating look at uh, valuation versus the number of employees, which is not bloated by any means, 123,000 workers at Apple. There's still a huge gap between Apple and the other high-flying tech names we watch, obviously Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, when it comes to valuation. Take a look. Amazon is the closest, but it's still uh, pretty far away from hitting a trillion. The stock would need to hit just over 2,050 to break a trillion, and right now trading around 1830. You know, Josh, uh, some people pointed out some of the lessons of what a trillion dollars taught us. One is that you don't need a, an iconic founder to still be leading the company. And despite all the talk about software eating the world, still need hardware to make these things work. 
Yeah, I mean, listen, you, you talk about Tim Cook's tenure. He took over in August 2011, Carl, and since then, you know, the market cap when he took over was around $350 billion. Uh, stocks up around 300% under his watch. He's introduced uh, a lot of products, right? So watch, speakers, um, returned about $275 billion to shareholders. Interesting, uh, you know, look at those names right there on the board. Those results we just saw from those companies, Carl, were so strong. I mean, you look at Amazon, what it's doing with its cloud computing business, its ad business, all that money you can now just plow right back in to its core online retail business. Alphabet, net revenue growth, 25%. That was the highest, Carl, since 2014. Finally, Microsoft, Satya Nadella just told you his commercial cloud revenue clocked in at almost $7 billion. It's growing at a pace of more than 50% with expanding margins. So all those companies nipping at uh, Apple's heels there, Carl. Sean, we've been very focused on Apple the last couple of days, but going back to that board we just showed on the TV screen, Alphabet, Amazon, Microsoft, some of the other big cap tech names that are also moving closer and closer to a trillion dollars. Is this a situation where these companies are becoming so big, so powerful, so valuable that it's going to become that much harder for smaller startups to break in and compete? Uh, the startups need to, to solve different problems, and, and the beautiful thing about technology is, you know, we're surrounded by problems, and there's many things across uh, America and worldwide that, you know, people are not uh, having everything that they want and all of their needs met. So I think the uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem will find other things to work on. I would probably not fund a new company that wanted to build a phone to, to go into your pocket. You know, that game is kind of over, but <laughs> there's always, always new stuff to do. So. Uh, we're, we're clearly excited about the future, and Menlo continues to invest in new exciting companies. This kind of mobile uh, transportation in cities is an exciting one. You know, like I said, Uber, you know, electronic bikes, e-bikes, and e-scooters, and, and uh, you know, next third-party logistics. Like, there's just so many uh, things that still need to be fixed in the world. You know, you brought up the scooters. That seems to be such a hot topic for investors that come on our show. I mean, what's the opportunity there? It's really a fascinating one. So uh, we were investors in Uber and then Jump Bikes, which now Uber bought, and then our most recent one's called Skip. And what you see is, uh, you know, if you can give consumers an experience where they have an existing behavior, and then you make it better, faster, and or cheaper for them, then, then they like it. And so you're walking to work and you got a mile to go and there's a little scooter there and uh, people hop on it. It's about a 60 second registration process before you get on and ride off and then you get there you know, 10 minutes faster and it's kind of fun and, and uh, you know, you're, the wind's in your hair and, and you smile and, and you laugh about it. So uh, it's working. It's still small scale right now, but, but you know, people really enjoy them and, and they're, uh, they're getting to work a little bit faster and getting more time with their families and whatever else. So I'm excited about the space. Obviously we made an investment, but uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's a trend that the whole world kind of needs in some form or fashion, transportation is a ubiquitous need.